Hi everybody, Paul Richards here, here with Andy Chatfield, our lead support technician. How's it going guys? I'm the vMix expert, Andy is the Wirecast expert. We are doing vMix versus Wirecast, two of the most popular live streaming softwares. So let's get started. So uh, we've got our virtual set behind us uh, showing, uh, v our virtual television behind us showing the features of Wirecast. Uh, we're going to go over both the features of Wirecast and vMix. And the reason why this is so important is because I talk to so many customers who uh, are stuck on one software because that's what they started with and they can't change at this point. So they've already got their workflow going with Wirecast or with vMix and they wish they would have uh, made a different decision but they didn't know up front and now everything's set up and started. So. Um, that's a really important uh, thing when you're looking at some of the free software like op open broadcast software, XSplit. Um, you know, should you go with the free? Should you go with the paid? Uh, we already did a video on the free softwares. Uh, we did our intro video. We did our streaming equipment video, our software video. Now we're finally at vMix versus Wirecast. Obviously, software is a big part of your overall live streaming. Uh, it's probably the most important part is the software you use. Um, and you either need a computer or a, pr or a processor, you know, like a TriCaster or something like that, and a pretty good graphics card. Yep. Um, and you need to enable Windows to run that graphics card. So let's start with Wirecast, Andy. Tell us about your experiences with Wirecast. What do you think about it um, in general? Um, Wirecast has been very good to me. Um, I Ever since I got the Wirecast Pro license, um, it's what I use pretty much predominantly to do all of my how-to videos and things like that. Um, Wirecast is a slightly more expensive uh, option than vMix, um, at least as far as the intro levels that it offers. It doesn't have a, a free option or a very cheap option. I think the cheapest option it has is Wirecast Studio, which is $4.95. Yep. And that's what, that would be the entry-level Wirecast, essentially. So um, it definitely does hit a little hard in the wallet, but it has a lot of good features that go along with that. Number one, Wirecast does not limit the amount of inputs you can have going into the system. You're basically limited on that based on the specs of your PC. Um, the dedicated RAM of your video card is really going to signify how, how many video streams you can pull into your computer at one given time. Um, and let's talk a little bit about Studio versus Pro. I know you have the Pro Edition. I do. So um, one of the things I know a lot of people have talked about is this new blue title effect editor. Um, it's, it's an additional it purchase. It's $99. But what it allows you to do is have like 3D virtual um, titles on top of your, your solution. It's really, really cool title engine, basically, uh, which does you, that it currently is not available for vMix. So that is a differentiator. Um, the 3D virtual sets from VirtualWorks, um, they do not, they're not as good as, as vMix. I'll just throw that out there right now. It's basically a virtual set that's static. You can't zoom in and out and have different things like you can in vMix. So right. that is a big difference. Um, but looks like you get that ad added pro level production for virtual s replays, virtual sets, stuff like that. Uh, and then down here, it looks like the program feed output to Blackmagic Design. Mm -hmm. So there's not a, hu a whole lot of differences between the two options, really. Yeah. If you need the pro license, you're pretty much going, you're planning on going out to a black magic piece. You're planning on doing a lot of live scoring or the virtual sets. You're planning on really use, utilizing Wirecast to its fullest abilities. Okay, so that's a good review of, of Wirecast. Um, you know, Andy's got a lot of videos he does on Wirecast, so you can take a look at some of those. Two of the things I found that were completely unique to Wirecast, one is Wirecast Go. Um, that allows you to live stream from any uh, phone. And apparently, like uh, it's only like five ninety nine. For yeah, it's, it's very, very reasonable, very reasonably priced. So that seems like a great idea for them because they, they do have an expensive software, but this is a way to get into like consumer, you know, get everyone kind of introduced introduced at the phone level, which everyone has a smartphone. Mm -hmm. The other thing that they have is this on Vif discovery, um, which allows you to uh, recognize cameras. Uh, that have on-vif compatibility right over your network? Right, as long as you have a camera that is on-vif compatible, you can go into the camera, turn on on-vif, and then as soon as you go into Wirecast, it will automatically find that RTSP feed and bring it up in Wirecast. Now, it doesn't have camera control through on-vif, it's just it does video, not. right? Nope. That's too bad, they should, they should do that because on-vif does support control. Yeah, I've used Wirecast before where I bring up on-vif device manager and will control my cameras with that while using Wirecast to record the video feed. 
that that's ideal. That's the way I see people using it. Um, all right, so let's switch over to vMix. Um, one of the I'm a big vMix user. Here's a here's a picture of uh, of kind of the inputs and outputs. Maybe we'll do a little desktop capture show you a little bit of what it looks like. But basically, um, let's let's switch over to the vMix um, pricing here. Um, one of the things you notice is that there's a lot more levels. So you can get started at a free level, a basic level, an SD level, and then even their HD level, which has four channels of overlay, um, is only 350. So you're less expensive than Wirecast, um, and you're getting basically all of these features kind of before you hit that $700 price point. So external output, I use that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, that allows you to have like an external monitor showing X, Y, or Z. It could be a full screen display of your output, your preview, pretty much anything. Um, streaming, obviously. Recording, obviously. And then here's your channel overlay. So that's kind of a big difference for, you know, for the basic and the HD. You only get one channel of overlay. And for those of you who are saying, well, what is that? Well, that would be here's one channel here. Here's another channel. Here's another channel. So it's just channels of, of overlays on top of your uh, basic channel. So having four is really ideal. That's when you can start doing real broadcasts like the, it looks like it is in the television series. I do not believe Wirecast goes up to 4K. I'm, not, I'm not positive about that, honestly. I didn't see anything when we were looking at Wirecast um, in here about even resolutions in general. Um, they don't seem to actually have anything in there. And then there's an upgrade page, um, which also has some new stuff. So we, it doesn't specifically, you know, if it was 4K, you'd think they would put it right on the front. Yeah, you know? I, yeah, exactly. Um, so I don't think it's 4K. Um, and then look at this. You can have a thousand total inputs with VMix, obviously. Right. It's kind of like the same thing with. That's just for the the HD version. I mean, you can get the SD version, but you're only getting 768 by 576 resol maximum resolution. Mm -hmm. So really, you're going to want the basic HD or the HD if you're planning to use this for video production because you're not going to be capturing video at 768 by 576. Yeah. So, I mean, it's something to look at. The, the features are there. Um, we really like using vMix. And then now I have two differentiating features that I found uh, that, that Wirecast does not have. VMix is planning to implement NDI, which is supposed to be available in a couple months. And what that allows you to do is ultra low latency uh, streaming over a local area network. Yes. Um, so you could have a TriCaster over here, a VMix over here, and now they can share resources with seemingly less low latency than like a frame, they're saying. It's super low. That will be um, very useful. The other thing that they're bringing out is a NDI capture application, which is going to be free. And what that allows you to do is, let's say you've got your computer over here, I've got my vMix over here. You can have the NDI capture application on your computer and be capturing your screen, and then it would be an available input on my vMix right over our local area network, so no need to, um, to like bring in a capture card. You know, because normally I would need an HDMI from you capture card into here, whereas now uh, it's all going to happen over the network. So that's right. going to. I'm going to get rid of all my capture cards finally. Um, and just um, there's a million other things. We have a playbook on this and what you could do. The other thing, I'm showing an Xbox controller here. That's not the best picture, but it does apply to what I'm trying to show here, is we do have camera control now, um, which is going to be freaking awesome. And I don't know why I have that picture there. I should really show this picture. Basically, you can pan, tilt, and zoom cameras directly in vMix now. Um, so what that allows you to do is you can have like multiple um, camera le camera inputs, and this camera input will go to preset one. This camera input will go to preset two. It also filters through the MIDI controller. So if you've got a MIDI controller, you can literally program a button to go boom, go to this preset, go to that preset. Um, so that's all built in. Now, um, from what VMix is saying, that is only going to be available in the 4K and the Pro editions. So. You know, you're not going to get that at this um, basic level here. You have to be in uh, 4K or Pro to get the camera, the PTZ camera control. Now, you will get NDI everywhere. And is the, the PTZ camera control, is that going to be over IP? It's over IP, yes. Okay, that's great. 
So they, they really thought it through. Um, it, they actually are building it in for Panasonic, Sony, PTZ Optics, and I think that's about it. Okay. Um, but yeah, yep, so that's all done. So that, that's our review, guys. Hopefully we helped you. Um, it, you know, in this, in this video series, um, is gonna have, we have a couple more videos left uh, in this video series, so hopefully you, know, you find them helpful. Um, that's the goal. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. If you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, right over here, we have free virtual sets. And then here are other playlists that you might be interested in, like camera overviews, some tips and tricks from Andy, um, and then live streaming we do every Friday. Thanks, guys.